Hi folks, Florida Man here. Today I'm bringing you a diplomacy commentary on a game I played as Italy on PlayDiplomacy.com. The game was played on the standard map, and it was named Europe on Fire. As is usual with me when I play as Italy, I started off spring 1901 establishing good diplomatic relations with Austria. Someone in the public press started a silly rumor that I planned to work with Turkey against Austria, which I rebutted. Austria suggested that I could take Greece and we could work together against Turkey more easily that way, and naturally I was agreeable to that. Meanwhile, Turkey was making the very strange proposal that I convoy a unit of his over toward France soon and we let Austria and Russia fight each other while we defeated the French. When I expressed my skepticism about that plan's feasibility, Turkey asked me what I thought we should do and he suggested both Austria and Russia were reaching out to him for a possible alliance. I actually regret that I didn't get back to him here, because if I had, the whole direction of the game might have been different. In my early messages with the Western powers, I suggested to England and Germany that we could work together against France. England said he would reach out to Germany and get back to me. Unfortunately, Germany was a bit of a bad communicator. Or maybe I should say a weird communicator. He wrote in choppy sentences with poor spelling, comprehensibility, capitalization, and grammar, so I had no confidence that anything would be negotiated between him and the highly communicative Englishman. I had no communications with France in spring, which, in retrospect, seems like a remarkable oversight on my part. When orders processed, I had done almost all my typical spring 1901 stuff, which is to say, sadly, almost nothing. I opened to Apulia and the Ionian with Venice holding in place. I have to stifle a yawn just talking about it now. Listeners, take note. This is not how you want to begin a game as Italy. Italy needs to have something more interesting than this in the pot, in order to do well. And unlike Austria, Italy is blessed with the ability to get things going at an early stage without taking any really big risks, since Italy is pretty difficult to attack in 1901. Going into the fall, France and I exchanged our first and only messages of the match. I sent him a long message, in which I commented on his neighbor's styles of communication, apologized for not having contacted him sooner, and proposed some southern DMZs. France replied to accept my proposal and state that he planned to build an army in Marseille, not a fleet, which was reassuring to me. After the way the spring moves went, Turkey commented that he knew Austria and Russia must be working together, and I agreed to work with him against them. This was just a meaningless promise for my part but in retrospect I'm kicking myself for taking the diplomatic situation with Turkey as lightly as I did, because as the fall moves suggest, he's going to end up being a powerful Mediterranean influence. Although I have very pessimistic feelings about allying with Turkey when I'm Italy, the problem here was that I was actually starting to distrust Austria, who had an apparently strong relationship with Russia, while making sure to keep units on the border with me. At the same time, Austria was communicating to me asking which unit I was going to move into Greece. I wasn't sure I believed he would actually provide the promised support into Greece, I thought there was a pretty good chance he'd bounce me, and I was worried that I might end up in the weak position of having no builds after 1901. So although I stated I would convoy to Greece, I had doubts about actually executing that move and potentially losing out on the build that plagued me until orders processed, and in the end I rather embarrassingly made the most boring and typical Italian opening for fall 1901. I convoyed into Tunis which, in retrospect, was a big mistake, by not trusting either Turkey or Austria, because trusting either one of them would have meant I would gain something valuable. Either I would have a strong alliance with a power that was developing rapidly, Turkey, or I would have gotten Greece. My experiences with being deceived led me to be too paranoid here, but when you're playing as Italy, it's important to take risks in order to expand. The mistakes I made in 1901 were, as far as I'm concerned, probably the mistakes that were fatal to my prospects. I began alienating Turkey, who successfully captured Romania, actually following through on fighting the supposed Austro-Russian alliance, and I failed to seize my chance to capture Greece, which would have naturally been a more significant center to gain than Tunis. On the bright side, France seemed to be keeping his word to me since he took Spain with an army and Portugal with a fleet, positioning, deliberately, in such a way that the fleet would take longer to reach me if he decided to turn and attack me. Unfortunately for France, Germany decided to move into Burgundy at this point along with supporting England into Belgium, which France was trying to capture. So at the end of fall 1901, it looked like there was an Anglo-German alliance in the west. In the build phase, in keeping with that possible alliance, Germany built two armies, 
England built two fleets, but neither of them was in Liverpool, which suggested that maybe England did not want to go after France after all. France built two armies, just like Germany, which had the effect of strengthening England's position by allowing England to dominate the seas. I built a single fleet because anything else would restrict me to only being able to attack Austria. Austria built an army which was his only choice, and Russia didn't get any builds. In spring 1902, England moved against France while also bouncing with Germany in the North Sea. France retook Burgundy, and Germany and England took the north from Russia by capturing Sweden and St. Petersburg. At the same time, in the south, Turkey advanced further against Russia by capturing Sevastopol and the Black Sea. Austria moved into Galicia and Greece, while I moved into the East Mediterranean Sea to set up for the Lepanto. It strikes me, looking back at this game and every game that I've ever played as Italy, that although I employ the Lepanto quite often, it is a very inefficient moveset. You have to commit at least three units to it, and it relies on getting lucky or outguessing your opponent in Turkey. Just a thought that stuck out at me looking at this map. In fall 1902, England made it very clear that France needed to watch out for him by occupying the Irish Sea. France's moves were all defensive, but they were probably pretty nearly his best options. Germany self-bounced in Belgium to protect it from France, while moving one army toward Russia. Russia tried to make up for past mistakes by attempting to walk into Romania, but Austria bounced him. Turkey furthered his invasion of Russia by taking Moscow. On my end, I decided to make up for my lack of momentum by attacking Austria, which is, as I've noted before, the classic mistake early on of an impatient Italian. I will confess that I was rather desperate to get growth from somewhere, but in retrospect it seems clear that my target should have been Turkey or France. At any rate, my betrayal is successful in the short term. I capture Trieste and complete a convoy into Albania as well, so we'll see how that all works out. In the build phase, despite my anti-Austrian gestures, Turkey builds a fleet and an army, not just armies, as I had hoped. This gives Turkey four fleets and two armies, making the bulk of his forces useless against anyone except me. I expressed my disappointment, but there was nothing that could be done about that. My build was an army to help me retain and expand my Austrian holdings. Germany built an army and England built a fleet, continuing their positive synergy. In spring 1903, I immediately lost Trieste and gained Greece. It's my bad diplomacy that, as I turned on Austria, Austria responded by rushing to face me, while at the same time Turkey moved against me and Germany sent a unit south that I did not request, suggesting it was coming to Austria's aid. That last decision didn't quite make sense to me either. At any rate, my poor strategic decision to attack Austria head-on led to a host of consequences for me. I'm under attack from two sides, and because Austria is focused on me, Turkey is able to continue absorbing Russia without interruptions. In the west, England took the Mid-Atlantic Ocean and convoyed into Belgium while Germany captured Burgundy. It looked like they were finally advancing successfully against France. I retreated my Trieste army to Tyrolia to give myself a little buffer against a combined Austro-German attack and keep my offensive options open. However, in fall 1903, they worked together to retake Tyrolia. Fortunately for me, Tyrolia was not a center, and I do retake Trieste at this point by sacrificing the position in Tyrolia to cut Austria's support. I also maintained control of Greece and the Ionian Sea, and Russia walked back into Moscow, so Turkish advancement was held back this year. Unfortunately, in the West, France got thoroughly crushed by Germany and England, mainly because he stopped moving and playing at this point. The unfortunate part is that now England and Germany would be able to focus elsewhere, meaning my conflicts in the East would not have time to resolve themselves properly. I retreated to Piedmont, while Austria retreated to Budapest. In the build phase, I felt forced to get another fleet to counter the nonsense Turkey was up to, to my east. England got a fleet and an army, and Germany got yet another army, showing no intent of ever going against England. In spring 1904, Germany took Austrian support into Trieste, capturing that center from me. At the same time, I miscalculated. I moved Piedmont into Tyrolia and Greece to Albania, cutting off my own retreat option and causing the Trieste army to be destroyed. At the same time, Turkey was advancing against me while England moved an army south into Burgundy, the next step toward destroying France. I moved into the Tyrrhenian Sea because I had anticipated that England would start attacking me here, although that turned out to be slightly premature. However, in fall 1904, England convoys Germany onto North Africa and captures Marseille. As far as I'm concerned, the war with England and Germany has begun. Germany continues holding on to Trieste. On the bright side, I retain Greece. Turkey attempts to take the Ionian Sea, but it's futile for obvious reasons. Turkey and Russia do succeed in destroying a German army that had advanced into Prussia. 
In the build phase, Germany rebuilds that army, but he should have had an additional unit, and thanks to the destroy that Russia and Turkey forced on him, he is down to seven units instead of the eight that he should have, since two of his home centers are occupied. England builds an army. In spring 1905, England finally invaded the Mediterranean, and Austria retook Trieste from Germany, at the same time that Turkey finally got into the Ionian as well as taking Budapest. I should give some background here. There had been a series of messages exchanged in the last season or two between me, Turkey, and Austria, in which Turkey said we should work together against the West, and I agreed with him, but I also pointedly said that Turkey had been untrustworthy thus far, because it was a fact that he had lied to me more than once in this game already. Otherwise, there wouldn't be all these fleets causing me trouble from the East. So I said that I was very willing to work together, but not willing to leave myself completely open to him. I also said that if he took a single Italian center, I would throw everything to the Anglo-German alliance. Austria agreed with me and made his own demands, and Austria also said that Turkey should keep out of the Ionian Sea so as to avoid threatening me. I responded that Turkey could move into the Ionian Sea if he didn't also follow up by filling in the Aegean. What happens next is spring comes around, Turkey moves into the Ionian, and he fills in the Aegean. In other words, he violated our trust again at the moment of this collaboration's inception. This was, frankly, just a little annoying. I felt that Turkey should see the writing on the wall at this point, and begin opposing the Western Alliance sincerely, rather than just transparently using it as an opportunity to position to stab us. I think the problem was a combination of a below-average Turkish player and the nature of the Turkish position. Turkey's homeland is so far away from the front lines with the West that it's easy to ignore or downplay Western threats in your own mind until they're right in your backyard. It's a psychological positioning thing that I've noticed causes problems even for me sometimes. All that being said, I don't think there's any excuse for how foolish the Turkish moves are here. He not only backstabs his allies for very little return, but he also leaves Warsaw open to be taken by Germany or Russia, and he even vacates the Black Sea to move into Bulgaria rather than, say, Sevastopol. Turkey's moves are worse than treacherous, they're tactically poor, and they show a lack of strategic vision that is going to be fatal here. In fall, Turkey says I should try moving forward into Gulf of Lyon, and he promises to support Tunis to hold in place. It's hilarious that he thinks he can actually deceive me after the spring moves. I agreed with him that this would be a good idea, and then I bounced with him in Naples because his attempt at deception was super obvious. So instead of fighting Germany and England, who get Tunis at this point, I am now fighting the blood-sucking Turk. Shockingly, Russia walks into Warsaw, who could have seen that coming, and Germany pushes Turkey out of Galicia. So it seems the West was not as friendly toward Turkey as he must have been hoping and imagining. At the same time, there's an interesting development in the West. England moves into Portugal, and German-controlled Paris, which was clearly a stab. Since Germany also lost Trieste, he loses the opportunity to build another unit that he had banked. England is finally showing his true colors now, and going for the solo. In the build phase, England gets a fleet and an army, Russia rebuilds a home center army, and I build a Naples fleet. In spring 1906, Germany and England fight directly with each other, but Germany is much worse positioned than England for this fight, because Germany has never built any fleets. Also, I pile onto Germany too, taking English support back into Tunis. Turkey continues attacking me like he's playing this game with a controller that only has one functioning button. Austria retakes Budapest, because why not? Turkey feels the need to take Galicia back, although it's pointless. At this point, I was getting tired of this game, and mainly tired of the communication styles of Turkey and Germany. Turkey's problem was that he couldn't get three words out without one of them being a lie, while Germany's problem was that he needed to use his spell checker, and grammar checker, and proper capitalization checker, and logic checker. Fall 1906, England acquired ownership of Tunis, Munich, Denmark, and Sweden. At the same time, Turkey was acquiring ownership of Greece and securing his ownership of Budapest. Very clever, Turkey. Germany's units suffered a temporary lapse in sanity and didn't defend Sweden or Munich at all. The game was circling the drain at this point, folks. In the build, England got two armies and a fleet, because you need more units if you're going to conquer the entire world. Turkey got an army, but it was pointless, because he needed to also get a time machine to send that army somewhere useful. In spring 1907, Turkey tried pushing a Stop the Leader alliance because he thought that stopping England was still achievable. The truth is, it probably was not. I stated that I was willing to sign on, but I expected England to win anyways because it was too late and there were too many of us to coordinate well. 
Germany didn't really say anything, and England walked into the remaining German centers without resistance. In fall, England basically just maintained the status quo, and won. After that spring, there really wasn't anything left that could be done. The final position of the board looked like this. As you can probably tell, this was a rather frustrating game for me. England got a solo partially because it was earned, partially because the German and Turkish players weren't very good, and partially because I made a number of unforced errors. Learn from my mistakes to the extent that you can, and remember not to take defeat too badly, because if human beings were rational, no one would ever solo. This is one of those games where the irrationality of other players was so important to the outcome that the blame I assign myself is somewhat mitigated. I must say that I didn't play a great game as Italy, though. It's easily my weakest country at the best of times, and my skills are still growing. Examining these losses is part of how I grow, though. So, when I play Italy in the future, I hopefully get better results. I hope you enjoyed this diplomacy commentary, and I especially hope that it was more fun than the game itself was for me. I aspire to keep things interesting at all times for you guys. If you felt it was a value, please consider joining the people whose names are on the screen now by supporting me with subtitle translations or through Patreon. If you don't speak a foreign language or you don't have money to spare, we also appreciate likes, comments, and especially subscriptions. The more of those three things we have, the more Diplomacy fans will be drawn to Florida Man Diplomacy. What did you think about this game? Was there some way I could have turned things around past the death of France? Aside from persuading Germany to turn on England, which seems impossible to me in retrospect given the way he communicated and the way he ultimately played in the latter part of the game, I am interested in any feedback or advice. Until next time, Florida Man, out.